Hi. Hello. How are you? Very well, thank you. I'm so excited to have a look at your work this evening as well. Um, give us a little brief insider into what we're going to be having a look at this evening. Uh, so we're going to just be looking at, I, I shoot many different things, um, but what I'm going to start by talking about is the location shoots that I do. Um, because I find the tools that I use within Lightroom are the most interesting to me to talk about. And mm -hmm. I think whenever I speak to someone that doesn't know much about Lightroom or knows anything, and I show them just a few of the tricks that we can do, they're like, that's amazing. And it's really it's nice for them to like learn something. So I thought I'd start with something that's technically a, quite a simple shot, but you can do some really interesting things with. I think it's going to be so helpful for some of our listeners out there yeah, as well. Definitely. So. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely stick around for this one. Um, so tell us a bit about your photography. How did you get started? Um, I guess photography was always, it was always just a hobby. Mm -hmm. um, even from like, a young age, from like, being a teenager, I used to go out with my friends and take lots of photos of random things from ourselves to places that we go visit at weekends. And it, it was just purely, I love, I love photography mm -hmm. and it was, I had no skill, no training, no eye. It was just snap happy. Um, and you know, for a few years, that's how I continued. And then uh, at university, I, it kind of died a bit of a death. I did what something. What did you study? I, I studied law. Wow, completely which different. Is, is yeah. not creative, <laughs> it's not visual, it's the complete opposite. And I did that for three years. And, and then I left the world of law behind and decided to go into something that's a bit more creative, a bit more like suiting to my personality. Um, and I kind of fell into PR. Yeah. Um, obviously that's a little bit more creative. And I kind of, um, I started to pick up a bit more of an eye for things because obviously you have to deal with a lot of like, press materials as yeah. images for, like I used to work in restaurant PR, so it was interiors, um, portraiture, yeah. um, food and drink. Um, so I kind of, so I started like getting an eye for things that way. Yeah. Um, and around that same time when I was just getting started in PR about five years ago, um, I started a blog and the blog was kind of just an outlet for me to waffle, ramble and talk rubbish and okay. also share <laughs> photography and, and just purely, it was, it was a personal thing that it's, it's just something I enjoy doing. Um, is that blog still around? It is, and it feels like it's very much a full-time job on top of the photography side yep. of things. Um, what, so yeah, and it what's it called? It's called Is Was, or it, it, it stands for It Starts With A Story. Yeah. So everything is a story that I tell or nonsense that I ramble, basically. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of use that as an outlet of my photography, and, and I grew every year. I was getting a better camera and, and upgrading every year and understanding more about how to use a camera because yeah. it's it's completely self-taught and through trial and many many errors I, I picked it up and then it was about eight, 16 18 months ago that I decided actually PR wasn't where my, my passion passion yeah. was and I really enjoyed photography and I was doing it for clients like ad hoc and I would often be asked by people oh how do you how do you take a really good photo on your phone and and what do you need to do? And I was that go-to person. And I was like, actually, I know a bit. And yeah. I have my, that's kind of my eye and that's, that's people like it. So it, it kind of happened and I made the decision and I was just like, yeah, this is, this is where I'm gonna go because why not give it a shot now and you never exactly. know where it'll go. Um, 16 months later, I'm still surviving. Yay, um, congratulations. Which is really good. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, that's kind of how the whole photography journey started and came about. And, and like, I'm very much still learning now, but that's okay. Because, yeah. you, you know, I don't have the years and years and years of experience. I'm, I haven't been trained by anyone. It's purely me picking up my camera, going out, shooting, learning manual by myself and learning how to to operate a camera um, and then taking it into Lightroom, for example, and playing around with that. Yeah. So it's, it's just purely something that I really love. And I think when, generally speaking, when you love something, you're good at it because yeah. you, you dedicate the time, you put in the extra hours and 
and something just clicks. That will, isn't there? Yeah. 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 And so how have you seen your signature style develop over the last, well, 16 months? Yeah. Um, it's, it's getting there. I think I, because I shoot so many different things, I shoot everything from food, drink, interiors, events, people, travel. Um, it's so varied that my, my style does kind of, there are similarities between each subject, but it varies depending on just a bit slightly. Um, so for example, um, my events might be a bit more whimsical, a bit mm -hmm. softer, um, because I'm dealing with people and people can be quite precious when they're having their photographs taken, yep. understandably. Um, whereas with, like for example, drinks, it might be a bit more sharper. There might be some deeper, darker colors going in and yeah. just really, it depends basically. But the kind of, the consistency I've seen with my photography is it kind of ticks this list of bright, colorful. There's always a sense of color and like movement in the, in the imagery through just bringing it to life. Um, and contrast. And I think um, someone actually said to me the other day that my photography is real in the sense of that you can, you can imagine yourself in that scene, whatever I've taken a picture of it, it, you kind of, it resonates and you can pop yourself into that, whatever the scene is, whether it's a, a picture of a street somewhere with yeah. lots going on, or you're at a table with friends and, and you're at a meal. And so it's got that kind of, grittiness real, but in a, in a lifestyle, in a very colorful way. Yeah, well, yeah. great feedback to have, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what advice do you have for those just starting out on their photography journey? Mm -hmm. um, I, I do actually get quite a lot of people just say like, how did you begin and, and how, how should I start? And I just, I, literally what I said before was go for it. Just, there yeah. is no right or wrong answer. There is, there isn't. Um, it's a lot of trial, a lot of error, and it's, it's practice. Practice makes perfect, and it is, it's true. And, and with photography, I think what's so great about photography and is the fact that it's your eye. Mm -hmm. It's so subjective. Yep. And it's, it's art in the sense of like you can create whatever you want to do. And yes, it might not be the same as someone else's. And they might go, you're doing it completely wrong. I've had that very recently. Who hasn't? Um, <laughs> And, the, I, and you know, you just want to shout back and say, I'm not doing it wrong, I'm doing it my way. Yeah. And my way ends up looking like this, and that's exactly what I intended. And that's okay. And that's okay. Like, yeah. you don't have to, I, I had no training at all. And yeah, my, my photography, people, people pay me to shoot. Yeah. And you know, that's great. And it's okay that I haven't learned a million ways. So I think for anyone that just wants to start practicing or, you know, have an idea of like what they want to shoot. It's like, go, go and try, yeah. take your camera. And if you want to go shoot locations, go we'll have a walk. If you want to shoot food, just go into a restaurant or set up something at home where you feel comfortable to begin with and practice, play. play. Yeah. It, there's no right or wrong. In my books, it's just go for it. Amazing, well, it's such, it's such good advice. <laughs> yeah. I think especially, you know, even if you've gone through the, the academic route of learning oh. photography and you spend ages being taught to look at others for inspiration, then yeah. you get out into the world and you're like, well, what, what next? Yeah, yeah. And you should never compare yourself to someone that has been doing it for as little as one year, 10 years. Like, you, you, you shouldn't have to. You don't need to. You can look to them for inspiration and, and admire them for what they do and, and see how they do it to see whether that, that suits what you're going to do, yeah. whether that fits with your, your eye. And then you put your touch on it and, you know, if it's something that you can really pursue as a career, then go for it because there's so much opportunity now. There's so much, there's so many more ways of, of shooting and seeing the world and seeing photographs that there's plenty of space for every kind of photographer out there. Definitely. So. Yeah, I say that. Mm -hmm. So obviously you have your blog mm -hmm. and you're also quite active on your Instagram as well. Um, how important is photography to your presence overall online? Yeah, really, really important is the underlying answer. Um, my photography is so related to my online presence in the sense that people I think follow me because of my photography. They like to see my take on things, like the yeah. way that I shoot a certain building or the way that I 
take pictures of like interiors. They they follow me for that, and you know, my online presence relies on my photography, and yeah. and, and it, they both go hand in hand, and they they, they work so importantly together. Um, I have noticed recently with a lot of clients that I've been working with, they they need the social media photography because they they can't just rely on a someone from their staff who literally has no yeah. idea to go in and take a photo that they can publish and make yep. it seem desirable for people to go to that restaurant for that dish. That, so there needs to be a, a midway point between someone on their iPhone and then someone that's like like seriously hardcore, yep. like classically trained photographer. Yep. They need that in between. Um, and you know, a lot of my business comes through social media photography because it needs to look relatable. Yes. It needs to be social. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, I've, I've had a lot of work through Instagram. Um, it's really helped me expo as exposure. Yeah. It's a marketing tool, um, but also it's just a way that allows me to show off the photography. And that's what I get really excited about doing is just when I, I take a picture that I'm like, I love this, it's great. Yeah. Even if it doesn't get like a million likes, I love it. And that's yeah. why I share it. And so I, I love the fact that there's been a platform to allow me to do that. It's, it's great. Well, speaking of showing off your work, I think now is probably the perfect time to hand over to you okay. and we can have a look at some of your work and how you edit. Mm, okay, amazing. So, like I said, I do um, a bit of location shooting mm -hmm. for different clients and also I think people might follow me on Instagram because of the kind of the architectural shots that I do, the, the lifestyle scenes of everyday life in, in cities and, yeah. and, and whatnot. So I thought, whilst this is it's kind of a, a plain image. The, the tools that I'm using is, they are really exciting. And yeah. I just like the magic that they can create with such simple, easy steps, which again, as anyone that's a beginner or is like daunted by the fact of like even using Lightroom, like yeah. it's, it's really, I think it's quite good to know that you can just do some really quick steps and completely transform um, an image. And I also, I use Lightroom um, to, enhance a photograph, yep. like I will never completely edit and change the overall look of a, of a shot because, I, as I said, I like the realness um, and imperfect is perfect to me. Yep. So, for example, with this scene, um, it's like a little, little London lifestyle scene mm -hmm. um, taken in Covent Garden, which is a very, very photogenic place. It's lovely, yeah. Um, and there's a bit of a stride by going on, so that's that goes down very well on Instagram because it just <laughs> adds in a human element. Yep. Um, and often you can create nice stories around a, a good stride by. So I basically, I begin with what I would call the magic button. Um, and I, I love it. Mm -hmm. It just creates just this instant, like, pick me up. Yeah. Um, which, so I enable the profile corrections and just instantly you just see a change. So this is, um, this is getting rid of any distortion in your lens and yes. also removes the vignetting around the edge yes. as well, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it's brilliant for that. And, and distortion is the bane of my life because I'm very <laughs> much symmetrical, straight yep. on, lines. Yep. I, I can see a beautiful photograph and if something, if I can't quite make it symmetrical, yep. I'm it, the same. it grains <laughs> in my head and it really saddens me. Um, so, so yeah, I'll, I'll begin with that step and then I would literally just click the vertical button and then it basically almost grabs, like it puts a lasso around, a lasso around the, the building and mm -hmm. pulls it forward so it's as if you're literally facing it, as you're yeah. facing it, and it's brilliant for that. It's like a quick and easy uh, tilt shift lens, isn't it's it? It's brilliant, and you know, it's, it's so simple. Um, and I, I mean, I can do the constrained crop, but I, I like to be a bit old fashioned and do a few things manually. Um, and I also just like to have a tweak and, and see where I want to crop it. Um, so I'll just kind of have a play around and see what I'm happy with, because at the end of the day, it's, it's whatever I want to do with it. It's yep. my photograph, my eye, all that. Um, so I'll begin with that, and then I'll, I'll notice that there's kind of, it's not quite symmetrical there, and that yep. will grate on me a little bit. So I'll go back down into the lens correction, go over to the manual, and I'll just kind of have like a, a play ever so slightly because that to me, 
there's there. That, that's all yeah. I see, and that, that satisfies me now, yeah. so that's good. I'm glad that your OCD with oh straight lines goodness. is as bad as mine. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, and so once I've, I've, I've managed to create that, <laughs> um, I then sort of go into more detail about the, the tones and the colors and just the, the basics of the image. What I almost start by doing is stripping it back mm -hmm. completely. Um, I, I ruin it almost. Um, <laughs> I, I highlight, I have a love-hate relationship with highlights. I like to just take them out for now. Yep. Um, cause sometimes I find they're a bit just overpowering. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I also really like to up the exposure just a bit um, because I like to see in my feed, like I, I really I like really bright brightness. Um, so overexposure, great, it's fine. I'm happy with ex overexposing. Um, and then I will just start by taking out the shadows and the blacks. So it's, it's almost, it's a really washed out image. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of allows me to go back in and build it up. Yeah. Um, just, yeah, I've, this is the, the way that I've learned to do it and it's the way that I'm programmed to do it now. So it just automatically, this is what I go through. Um, and so then basically I'll start maybe, I love the contrast button. Um, it just makes things pop. Um, it's a little bit too bright, so I'll just go back down. And it's just, it's, it's a case of having a play. Um, I will then, see what I want to do. I like the fact that this, well, this needs to definitely pop some more. So I'll go back and add in the black. Yeah. And it just brings it out. It's really bold. And I just, I love how it brings it to life. It's definitely making that storefront stand out a bit more. Isn't yeah, it? definitely. Um, and I add a bit of clarity just to sharpen it up. And again, this is, this is for like an Instagram feed. And, and usually I find what I'm attracted to the most or drawn to when I see an image is this bright, sharp and contrasting look. Yeah. Um, and so I'll just start by doing that. And, and then, I, uh, for example, I see that it's quite yellow in the store. Yeah. Yellow is another peeve of mine. I just, it's not my, not my cup of tea. Mine is green. Um, green. Yeah. Oh yeah, it has to be the right kind of green, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But yeah. I, um, I love playing around when I do a lot of like um, shooting in restaurants or whatever and, and they have, they have to have the lights on for whatever reason. Yeah. I love playing around with the temperatures and then like the tints because that really helps to balance out any awful yellow lights. Yeah. Of which there's very many. Um, yeah. 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 It's especially just, shooting sort of night and artificial. It's, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. So thank gosh that this exist because otherwise there'd be a lot of yellow images out there. <laughs> um, so, I mean, there's not much yellow tones anywhere else or orange tones um, anywhere else, yellow tones, sorry, um, in the shot. So what I'll start by doing is just playing with the, the saturation and it just takes down just that tiny bit mm -hmm. of orange, yellow, sorry, um, in the shot and then I'll up the luminosity just to give it a bit more of a white, a white yeah. gold, which I can, I'm yeah. allowed, I, I like that. I don't mind that at all. Um, and then I noticed that the building has got quite a, a lot of red color to it and I quite like that. So I'll have a play and see whether I want to up the saturation of that just to, because the buildings are so beautiful in London. Yeah. There are so many amazing, like. Especially around that area as well. Yeah, and stunning stunning you architecture. look past the shops and you look up, mm -hmm. you see some beautiful stuff that you wouldn't necessarily be drawn to because you'll be just looking directly yeah. at the shops and that's sad because there are so many amazing buildings. Um, so yeah, I'll start by just having a play with the colors. I, I actually think I like this color palette. I think it's quite, it's bold, but it's also muted um, and there's enough color going on all around um, that I don't want to play with it too much. Um, so I kind of, I'll look at that and go, what else do I, I need? Maybe a bit more clarity, only a little bit. Um, Maybe shadows just really darken that, make it really crisp. And, and then, yeah, I'll look at that and go, that's, that's enough in terms of the, the color and everything. Yeah. Um, but then now it gets the really fun part because you're like, oh, I see there's a I lot of things. There's things that I don't want to be there. So I will then just open it up, uh, edit it in, the, in Photoshop. And, and then that's when you can just get really nitty gritty with what you really don't want to have in the yeah. shots. 
So for um, anyone who's watching who didn't quite see that, if you control click or yes. right click on the image um, and you'll find a link directly into Photoshop so it will bring it through dynamically yeah. for you. And the great thing about this is that once you've done your editing, it then puts the image back mm -hmm. with the original as well. So it's keeping everything nice and tidy rather than having to export it out. Yeah, definitely. It's having a bit of a temperament moment. Um, it's been a long day for my laptop. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Lots so of editing for you today, then. Uh, just a non-stop life of editing. <laughs> I'll do many, many shoots. Um, I'll get back. And then just spend my evenings editing and my weekends editing. Uh, it's all I seem to be doing at the moment. And how much time do you spend editing versus shooting? Oh, gosh, at the moment, it's every day I have a, a, some form of a shoot, whether it's just a few... Um, a few hours or a full day or even just a half day and then well this isn't worked this one has it cancel that it should be this one N no uh, maybe try, try and opening that one one more time can I close mm. that one down but yeah it varies it really does um, it's a uh, it's hard to find a balance of having a work life and a life, basically. Um, but it's lucky that I, I actually really enjoy the editing process. Um, and okay, that won't work, that won't actually work. That's fine. Okay. Um, if you want to, um, I know you know Raw quite well as well. So if you mm -hmm. just a lot of the um, a, a lot of the tools that you will find within Lightroom um, are also in Camera Raw. So actually, maybe maybe we'll just have a quick look at that. So if you want to show exactly how those, you know, just a quick run through of where those things are in Raw, and we can just get to the same point again. So I only ever edit in Photoshop yep. for that. So I basically, well, what I will kind of go through um, when, I, when Photoshop does work, I will just kind of use, I'll, I'll use the clone stamp and purely can have a try. Let's have a go. It might work for you now. Never know. Let's try opening it as a smart object and see if that one will do it for us. Come on. It was actually working earlier, so I don't I know. know. I've seen this demo already today. So I know, exactly. <laughs> I showed you it earlier. Um, so but if not, I can just say what I would usually do, in, and it basically revolves around the the clone stamp because it can take away just minimal, de like minimal things, and it just makes such a difference to your shop because you're you're not like you you can get rid of any rubbish that's on the pavement, any unwanted security cameras, or any wires. Um, there we go. It's had enough. It's called it a day. Um, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> so talk us through talk us through a, a normal day for you. So um, yeah, gosh, there is no such thing, sadly, as a normal day at the moment. It it can vary. Um, I might start the day doing um, like a, a social media shoot. Yeah. And what I mean by that is it's kind of a bit more relaxed, a bit more informal, and I they a client will perhaps let me loose in their restaurant, and I will just create content. I'll snap away and just get too much content for them. Um, and then we'll, we'll go from that. Oh, you did it. Magic. Oh, I've got, got the magic touch. touch. Yeah. OK, well, <laughs> in that case. So yeah, well, now that we're in. Um, and so yeah, for example, so I zoom in straight away on these two fellas here. And there we go. So you literally just, that's the, the clone stamp. And you say, oh, I'll get a bit smaller. Um, and just want to get rid of him. So you just kind of do that. And he, he's, he's gone. Obviously, I'll, I'll pay more attention to it if I had more time. But it's, you know, it's something for like Instagram. It, it's so small anyway that yeah. it's unlikely to be seen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then, for example, with this, whatever this is, I'll just kind of. Um, So we're using the clone stamp again on this clone one. stamp, and you know there are lots of other ways of doing it, but I found the clone stamp is so way. easy, and it's, yeah. it's so simple. And if you learn nothing else, then a clone, the clone stamp is so good, a good place to start. Yeah. 
So for those who haven't used a clone stamp before, um, what you can do is you can choose a sample point by pressing Alt and then clicking on your image. Um, and then once you've got that, you can then use that sample point to then start painting it in on mm -hmm. a different part of the image. Yeah. Um, so it's really great, especially with this image, which, which has got a lot of like, geometric patterns and repeat patterns, mm -hmm. like on this door that we're looking at now, for example. Um, all that bit of window yeah. just yeah, yeah, fills yeah. in really quickly. Yeah, doesn't absolutely. It? And um, yeah, just even things like grates, which you can't really see much, but you just you don't want it to be there. Yeah. You you just kind of build up from a, another part of the image and clone it over, and it's so simple. And and you can if you don't like that dip in the pavement for whatever reason, then you just you just start. And 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 I I learned Photoshop purely by just going in and going what's this do? Let's have a play. And, and you know, I'm still learning like amazing tools today and, and I get taught by friends and I'm like, that's incredible. And, and obviously a lot of like tutorials as well are mm -hmm. really helpful online. Um, and just asking like fellow photographers, um, what do they do? Um, most are, you know, happy to share yeah. their tips and it's, you know, it's quite a nice, but you can already see that I'm starting to build back the pavement. Yeah. And I do it slowly and, and gradually, but I mean, it's a bit rushed now. And that's another real um, good point to mention as well in terms of retouching is building up slowly and just doing it bit by bit yeah, rather than definitely doing it all in one go. And, it, you know, sometimes it can, quite, it can take a lot of time. It depends on what your, what your subject is that you're shooting. Um, but it's just, yeah, it's actually quite therapeutic. Yes. I find it really, I know I have some like really trashy TV show on in the background mm -hmm. <laughs> and I just, it's I spend like my, my Friday nights editing, I watch rubbish on TV and my housemates will just be there watching it and I'll be there like, okay, kind of watching, kind of doing this and I do watching. spend a lot of my Friday nights, this is quite how rock and roll I am. Um, and I just Editing is edit. going out. Oh, it really is. <laughs> my Friday night is the new Monday. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I'll kind of go around and have a play and see what I really just don't like in the image. And then if, you know, I don't like it, I'll, I'll remove it. And that's, you know, that is actually quite a simple, a simple thing to do. And it's, it's not as scary or as daunting as people think. And I think that's what's important to know that, you know, you can literally be a complete beginner and just pick it up because I'm living proof that I, I, a few years ago, I was daunted by the very prospect of Lightroom, and I didn't know what to do. And it was kind of a, one day I sat myself down and I was like, right, I'm going to really get involved with this and understand it. And then all of a sudden, it, it all started to click, and it was all flowing. And then I'm like, no, OK, I'm here talking about it. Um, so it's, it's not a scary thing. It's just like with anything, you've just got to practice and, and yeah. get familiar with it and get comfortable. and. And you'll be amazed at how quickly you pick it up. Yeah, it really does sort of sink in quite quickly. Yeah, it? it does. And it just, you know, as well, if you know, you've got an eye for it, for things anyway, it just, everything sort of, it works. It, it does. So, um, yeah. So what's the next step for you after you've edited? Do you, do you do much else? Like, do you have any specific formatting for online or? Um, I don't really do much else. It depends, like, obviously what it is that I'm shooting and, and and what it's for, if it's for social media or if it's for like um, press use or whatever. But mm -hmm. generally speaking, I, I don't do much else because like I said, my images, I don't like to over edit yep. because I don't want it to look deceptive <laughs> and I still want that realness to sink in because my USP is the lifestyle element. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, there's not a great deal else I would do. So something like that, I'd probably just have a play around some more, just get rid of anything else unsightly. Um, but in terms of colouring, that's the way that I like it and that's the way that I will put it out there. Amazing. Yeah. And um, how many images would you, like for this shoot, for example, how many mm -hmm. different images would you have had that you then narrowed it down from? How many finals might you take out of a shoot um, along these lines? Something like a location shoot is so situational. Yeah. I mean, you, you can have really good days or really just bad days where it just isn't working for light reasons, weather, um, people even. It can be quite tricky. Yeah, if they're not in the mood to be photographed. Oh, yeah, and if yeah. they're not exactly wearing your ideal coat to be walking past in. Um, so it can be quite tricky, but 
I'm very much a photographer that I, I'm in the moment and I will take that shot and if it doesn't quite work, then I'll move on. I'm not, I can't sit around or stand around all day waiting for what I think in my head, yeah. um, which is, is good and bad, uh, but it's just, that's the way that I shoot. I, I don't have enough time just to be hanging out on yeah, if street. only. Yeah. I know, just to get one <laughs> shot. So I'll kind of give it a bit of time and hope that it works. If not, then I will plan in another day to come back and again, try my luck. Because that's what it is a lot of about, is a lot of luck. But so far, it, it kind of works. Um, it seems to be working. Yeah, so we've, we've done all right. <laughs> and what do you have? what do you have lined up? What's next for you? Um, so I'm kind of, uh, I do like to go away on, on holiday, but for like more passion project holidays, um, just to exp like explore my photography. Um, so I've got a month of traveling ahead, which is nice, exciting and scary. Um, Anywhere specific? So, yeah, so we're um, off to Cape Town um, oh, wow. next week. Um, Christmas? Yeah, so amazing. that'll be from a, like landscape photography, um, it'll be amazing, and obviously like wildlife, yeah, incredible. Um, and then I get back and then I go away again for New Year um, to India and Sri Lanka. So, oh, so the two of you might, yeah, be, I know. might meet up. I was like, oh, she's talking <laughs> about India, that's exactly what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, from, I mean, that just is incredible. But, like photography is so vibrant and so much culture that you can yeah. capture. Um, and I think that's what I really love to do and I enjoy doing. So um, I'm really excited to just have some personal time to develop some travel photography. Yeah. So fingers crossed that well, I can't wait. come out. Can't wait to see what you shoot out there. Yes. So I have to keep keep an eye on your Instagram and yes. see what happens. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing your work. It's been an absolute you. pleasure talking to you today. Amazing. Um, and I look forward to seeing more of your stuff in the future. Thanks so much.